Now, a little bit about the development of the university in reverse. We looked at it in reverse time back to a point. Quantum physics, for those of you who have heard the term, deals with things that are very, very small, like things that are atoms that are small, like protons and neutrons and so on. If the universe collapses, or if the universe started out very, very small, you really have to apply quantum physics. You can't really talk about space and time and causality, the order of time and so on, when you're talking about quantum physics, certainly not in a blasé way. So, when you talk about the universe being very, very small in the beginning, and again I stress, it's not small because there's a big void out there, we're talking about space itself is small, you have to apply quantum cosmology, which makes things very complicated. But if we want to just touch on the surface, we'll say that it started as a point. Okay, um, this is the subject of, of uh, tremendous research. As I mentioned, quantum physics deals with entities that are very small. If you go backwards in time, this model of the universe as it collapses and backwards in time, you know, we want it, and it gets smaller and smaller, we get to a point where we need to apply quantum physics in, in order to talk about the universe. Now, quantum physics deals with some things like space and time and causality. And the question of what happened first and what caused what is very, very subtle and very complex. And you, you cannot apply it naively to times within one small fraction of a second. The, the question, therefore, of this timeline of going back in time, it becomes very fuzzy when you get close to that point. If the theories are correct, then space and time are physical and they're tied up with matter and energy. And just like matter and energy became, so did space and time. Our conception of the universe is so time-oriented that we can't think of, we think that there has to be a cause to everything. There has to be a beginning to everything. But philosophically, that's not necessarily the case. There does not have to be a cause to everything. Everything within the universe has a cause. But the existence of that everything does not necessarily have to have a cause. We cannot learn out from the fact that everything in the universe has a cause and then apply that to the aggregate whole existence. Even if it sounds counterintuitive, it is not philosophically or scientifically sound to reason that way and to assume that. So therefore, it is not necessarily incumbent upon science or philosophy to answer a question which they don't consider to have meaning, like what happened before the beginning of life. Because 
There's no such thing as a second ago. It's a second and a meter ago. Time gets mixed in with space, and you can't have this causal relationship of this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and going backwards, this happened, and before that, this caused it, before that, this caused it. It gets much, much more subtle. So, quantum general relativity should yield answers to how you know, the universe uh, it, it will yield answers to, to cover that period from which the, the general theory of relativity starts predicting that we're down to the size of whatever, some kind of fundamental particle. And then that other theory takes over. Where that will take us is, some, is something else. It doesn't mean that it'll take us down to the beginning, because the concept of the beginning is also self-contradictory. The beginning means that there was, you know, there was time, but time began. And that, as philosophers pointed out for, for a long thousand years, that's a contradictory uh, concept. So things get, get very subtle. Okay. So that's what you were working on for the last while, is the theory of quantum gravity. 